non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Hey, you held him to 20 points, man. You gave us a chance at the end. So I got three words for you. You like that? Yes. Yes, we like Saturday checkdown episodes. No connection there to Kirk Cousins at all. That was not meant as wow. a cheap shot. Wow. But, uh, mm-hmm. We like to check in no, with you guys cheap, here. Uh-huh. 12, 13, 14, 15 minutes just to say hi on a Saturday here and uh, throw a little talker your way on Purple Daily presented by our friends at TCL, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost. Learn more at TCL.com. Inspire greatness with TCL. Boys, I have for you here, I just want your reaction on this checkdown episode to these NFL coach rankings from SI.com. Now, this is the Cowboys wing of SI.com. <laughs> I don't know why. It's weird. Like, Sports Illustrated has just kind of turned into, like, subsections of yep. yeah. In- internet subsections. No yeah. question. So this is the Cowboys country section of SI.com. <laughs> I'm gonna and they have they have one through thirty two NFL coaches ranked. They have a blurb about every coach. I'm just gonna go through this one. Curious to see where Kevin O'Connell falls and what you guys think. But also curious your thoughts on if some of these guys are too high or too low. All right. Okay. Number one, Andy Reid. Yeah. 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 Phenomenal job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I won't fight hard, you too hard on that. Hard to dispute. Yeah. Yeah. He I mean, he's one of the greatest coaches in yes. modern NFL history at this point. Just the regular season success. He's now got Super Bowls. Number two, Bill Belichick. Too high right now. Current. This is a current ranking. Yeah, no, yeah. no I, di- I disagree with that. I strongly disagree with this. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, no, it's not right. Current, it says, it's not right. Belichick has fallen out of the top spot, but if there isn't a major step in the right direction in 2023, he'll likely experience an even more significant drop. Well, Brady's been gone for like three years. Yep. You know, he's they haven't been job. garbage. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say yeah, I wouldn't say he's been like a detriment or anything, but he's not as good as he used to be, which is which is normal. It happens. It's like 70, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a at this point lifetime achievement award, but I just yeah. don't I, but, and that's fine if you're doing it for like his entire coaching career. But if it's current, no, I disagree. Number three, Sean Payton. No, oh, way too high. Way too high. He hasn't been in the NFL in a year and a half, two years, right? This feels like a ranking off reputation a little yep. bit. A Both little of them bit. are. And, and Sean Payton could easily be top five after this season. Yeah. But sure. right now, wh- why would you put him three? To Declan's point about not coaching for a while. Yeah, no. it's, it's a little tough. He's definitely top 10, but three seems a little aggressive. Mm-hmm. Number four, Kyle Shanahan. Too low. Too low right now. Hmm. Yeah. I'd, I'd put him too. I would have a hard time fighting that. The fact I'm more impressed with a guy molding teams without elite quarterbacks into championship yeah. contenders than I am sort of, you know, the other way around. Number five, Mike Tomlin. This is one that I think he gets overlooked lately just because the Steelers have been kind of in transition mode. But the fact that the Steelers, I mean, Mike Tomlin's been there since 2007, right? And they yep. have yet to finish below 500. Yep. Yep. There's just something about the culture that he builds, something about the way he squeezes, you know, the toothpaste out of every roster. Mm-hmm. It's hard not to call him a top five coach. John Harbaugh, six. I'll give you a chunk here so you can put it into context. Sure. Harbaugh, six. Sean McVay, seven. Doug Peterson, eight. Nick Sirianni and Mike Vrabel rounding out the top ten. I think Sir- Vrabel's way too high. Sirianni might be a little bit too low right now. If it's current, um, Vrabel might be too high. Doug Peterson might be a little bit too low. Like, he went into a dump. I, I mean, he one, he won a, a uh, Super Bowl in Philly before he got fired. And two, he went into a dumpster fire in Jacksonville. Yeah. Did a really good job. Mm-hmm. See, Vrabel's really interesting. They were... They were definitely weak last year. They went that was the the worst of the five years of Mike Vrabel. They went seven and ten. But they've gone to the playoffs three times in five years. They're yeah. nine and seven, nine and seven, eleven and five, twelve and five with Ryan Tannehill as the starting quarterback. 
Yeah. And he seems to be a good motivational coach. So I, I like me some Mike Rabel. I'm not going to fight that one. Uh, Sirianni is a really interesting one because they put together a great program in Philadelphia with him. Scheme is on point. Uh, yep. They've maximized Jalen Hurts. That's yes, which is really, really impressive. 11, Sean McDermott, 12, Pete Carroll, 13, Brian Dable, 14, Matt LaFleur, 15, Mike McDaniel. Whoa. Hold on a second. No, my, no Kevin O'Connell yet. No Kevin O'Connell yet. I think my headphones cut out there for a second because I didn't hear. Um, well, yeah. these are all like these guys. You know, Sean McDermott with the Bills yeah, that's and what fair. they've done. Yep. Pete, Pete Carroll would not have been this high if not for last season. Okay, give me yeah. Geno Smith, say goodbye to Russell Wilson, and we're still going to win nine games. Yep. Brian Dable, Matt LaFleur, and Mike McDaniel. That's where I start to struggle with O'Connell not being in that bracket, in that group. Yeah, LaFleur had Aaron Rodgers for four years. Well, and, So let's see how LaFleur does without Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and McDaniel is fine, and D- Dable is fine, but are you telling me O'Connell's not right around like in that same chunk? Well, here's another chunk. Zach Taylor, 16. Mike McCarthy, 17. Okay. Frank Reich, 18. Wait. Dan Campbell, 19. What? What's going on here? <laughs> Kevin O'Connell, 20. Hold the phone for who did this? <laughs> this is the Cowboys Country section of SI.com. Okay. okay. You know what? It's yeah. disqual- it's disqualified. It's disqualified right now. The Cowboys, Cowboys didn't the Cowboys. Was it last year the the Cowboys beat the crap out of the Vikings? What, what happened yes. with the Cowboys? Yeah, yes, that's but, just probably why. And yeah. Mike Ma- Mike McCarthy's at seventeen. Um, no. Here's what they here's what they write about Mike McCarthy. Let me okay. just read this to you, and I'll read you the the O'Connell one too. Okay. McCarthy knows how to guide a team to the playoffs, as evidenced by his six fourteen win percentage in sixteen seasons. But it's hard to get by back to back embarrassing postseason finishes for the Cowboys and only getting to one Super Bowl while having Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. So they're saying, like, he's low at 17, and then there's three notches below him, and you get to Kevin O'Connell. Here's the O'Connell write-up. Despite having a a minus three-point differential, the Vikings finished Kevin O'Connell's first season with a 13-4 and record. That perhaps should have been a clue that they might be in trouble come postseason, but it's also indicative of the impressive job O'Connell did managing each game. So hold on a second. I gotta. I'm trying to get my head around this. So Dan Campbell, Dan Campbell didn't make the playoffs, but he's a spot ahead of a guy that did make the playoffs. Frank Reich got canned, and D- Dable's a guy who, who again, to his credit, made the playoffs, beat the Vikings. But I don't know that there's a massive gap between those two coaches and Dable is well ahead of O'Connell. Here, I guess what I'm learning here is the top 20 coaches in the NFL are all pretty good in terms of like their resume or their current ability. So for, let's let's do the Frank Reich thing for a second. Yeah, he got canned. Yeah. But he took that job thinking Andrew Luck was going to be his quarterback and then Luck retires. And so now they went in, they went into like Philip Rivers land and Matt Ryan land and Jacoby Brissett and whoever the hell else was quarterback. So while they were trying to figure out life after Andrew Luck, the Colts went 40 and 33 in parts of five seasons before Reich eventually got fired. So, you know, that's, that's credible. Yeah, d- definitely credible. I just, yeah. I'm just a little bit surprised by, by how this is. I'd, I'd, I'd like a chance myself to do, do this list because it would look oh, very different. By all means, I think <laughs> it should. would look very, well, we, it would look we very do have different. some time between now and would, uh, training camp. I'll put it together up, a so. list here, but uh, <laughs> yeah, my list would look different. And look, I'm not, an O'Connell apologist, but come on, Mike. McCarthy. He is a friend of the show, though. So it's yeah, tough he is. To... Well, he is, but I mean, come on, Bill Belichick is number two right now. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, like so... I like I like Peyton as a coach. I think he's. I don't know if I like him as a person, but um, but he's number three. I get it. I mean, on one hand, Kevin O'Connell milked more wins out of that team than they should have won. On the other hand, it was a, it was a a giant luck box in the eyes of most of the you sure. know, yeah. the yeah. football fans around the country. So uh, let me keep going on this list here. Ron Rivera, 21, Kevin Stefanski, 22, Arthur Smith, Falcons, 23, Robert Sala, 24, 
Brandon Staley, Chargers, 25. Josh McDaniels, 26. Matt Eberflus, Bears, 27. Shane Steichen, the new Colts coach, 28. Yeah. D'Amico Ryans, Texans, 29. These are, some of these are new guys, right? Den- yeah. Dennis yeah. Allen, Saints, 30. Todd Bowles, Buccaneers, 31. Jonathan Gannon, 32. Yeah. Cardinals. So that's uh, so really like Kevin O'Connell, Ron Rivera is established. Stefanski had a good year, but Kevin O'Connell is like right in the middle of everyone above him is established or great or, you know, young, up and coming. And everyone below him is either new or fading, like Ron Rivera, you know. I don't know. Robert Sala is interesting. I guess we'll see now that he has a quarterback. But yes, I don't know that you can fight much for O'Connell to be like, like if you would have asked me without thinking about the rankings of the coaches, just, hey, top of your head, Kevin O'Connell, is he a top 10 coach? I would have said he's like, yeah, like fight, probably fighting to be around 10. He's the Kirk of coaches. Yeah, well. But in this, he's in this ranking, he's not right. He's, no, I know, but I mean, in the, our world, I I'd put him top fifteen, I believe. Because yeah, I, but, I, but I would, who are you booting 10, out? Yeah. Like it's kind of hard. You're going to boot out oh, Zach well, Taylor. Well, I'd boot out Mike McCarthy in a millisecond. Yes, no problem. Yeah, hundred percent. But McCarthy. Mike McDaniel and the job that when when he had two a healthy, I mean, God, that was an unstoppable offense. You know who I might boot right Dable, now? Dable, Pete Carroll. You going to boot Pete Carroll? You know who I might boot right now? Matt Lafleur. I think he's a pretty yeah. damn good coach. We're gonna find out. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I'm we're gonna find out. On I'm not positive on that one. I don't. I think it's a conversation, but I, I don't think you can do it yet. Sean McDermott, can you do that? It's it becomes hard. I guess this it's harder to put O'Connell, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, even the guys between fifteen, like Zach Taylor. I mean, God, that guy went to a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. right? Mike McCarthy's won a Super Bowl. Frank Reich, yeah, I, you could fight for Frank Reich. I'd put him above Dan Campbell. Yeah, he's above Dan Campbell. Come on. Yeah, here's the right about Dan Campbell. Perhaps there will be a shelf life to his style, but the Lions have clearly bought into the culture Campbell has built has built in two seasons. After finishing with nine wins, it'll be a disappointment if the Lions don't return to the postseason for the first time since 2016. So there you have it. I mean, yeah, that's fine. That's great. Uh, can you put together your rankings for sometime in July? Yes, I can do that. Yes, and they'll look very different than this. Okay. Sounds good. Maybe you can put your rankings together on a Bennington pontoon courtesy of Power Lodge like that. and or Miller Marine where throttle therapy is in full effect for many disappointed Minnesota sports fans. Look at that. There's Judd and his family yep. right there. <laughs> what fa- oh, my God, like is right there now. something I don't know about? There's me doing a front flip. <laughs> yep, look at that. <laughs> that was after another mm-hmm. twins loss. You're I'm like, actually I got to get on. I'm right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, powerlodge.com and millermarine.com to get into one of 300 pontoons in stock. Those Power Lodge locations are Brainerd, Onamia, and Ramsey, and then Miller Marine in St. Cloud. Thanks for hanging out with us here on this Checkdown Saturday episode. We hope you enjoy your Taylor Swift weekend in the Twin Cities. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment.